Hey there, how's it going? It's been a little bit since I gave an update on Monkeys with Guns, so let's do that. We're still working on the project, it's just moving a bit slowly. For both David and I, this is a bit of a side project that both of us are working on when we can. I'm the bottleneck at the moment, as I have far too many projects all going on at the same time, and I've been fighting with the art for a little while now. For today, let's take a look at some of the progress and design updates. In the last devlog, we looked at adding a new game mode to give a bit more variety to the gameplay. There's a card up top to check it out if you haven't yet, and while you're at it, don't forget to click subscribe and turn on the bell. In this video, we're going to take a look at the updates to the player select screen. For context, here's my original player select design. A player would join the game based on the controller they had, and the number of the controller was determined by the computer and how it was plugged in. By pressing the accept button, they would activate the monkey of that color, very similar to some old arcade cabinets where you had to stand at the controls of the character you wanted to play as. This kind of thing works very clearly on an arcade cabinet where you have art to clearly delineate which character is which. That doesn't work quite as well with a bunch of controllers that all look the same. The player would then be able to press left and right to select the skin they would like to play as. Once the skin is chosen, the player would then have a bullet appear in the level select area below, where they could then move their bullet left and right to make the selection of the level they wanted to vote for. The more I've looked at this design, the more I've realized I kinda hate it from a UX perspective. It's a bit unintuitive, and if you pick up controller 4 when no other players are in the game, it can also be unclear of which player you are. And after that, you have to look at the common area underneath to figure out which bullet color you are and where it is. So the first thing I did in the redesign is I want this whole level selection area gone. From a clarity standpoint, it makes so much more sense to have everything happen in the same box that the player is already looking at. We're also adding a lot more options that the player can access, so it makes a lot of sense to not have the player's focus running all over the screen. Because this is a multiplayer game, there's an extra hurdle to relate information in a very clear way so that each player knows which info is pertinent to them. Adding the level vote option to the box keeps the player's info contained in a space that is clearly theirs. Okay, so the redesign needs to have the ability to select the skin and the level. But as I said, we're also adding some more features. Instead of the color being determined by the input method you're using, players will now be able to change their color and select the one they want. There are currently 10 colors to choose from instead of the 4 that were there before. We're also adding the ability to play on teams, where the bullets that you shoot will not hurt any player that's on the same team as you. And lastly, we're adding some settings for the individual players themselves. Right now, it's just the ability to give yourself a handicap and to change your controls layout. We settled on not going with full button remapping, as it's a bit of a hassle to implement. It also can be finicky for players to use. Instead, we'll add a number of presets that the players can choose from. Closer to release, we'll be asking for suggestions of control layouts that people would like to see. That way we can get a good variety that doesn't just come from us and have our own biases. Reworking this screen to fit all the new elements was actually kind of tricky, and I went back and forth on it for a good while, moving things here and there, kind of just playing with how the order and layout should feel. But as of now, this is where the design and the user flow stands. We'll be following the flow as if we just began from the title screen. The four player boxes now all begin gray with a prompt to press and accept button to join in. Joining will now be in order no matter what controller or keyboard you're using. The first person to accept is player one, the second person, player two, and so forth. Once accepted, the player can then choose their monkey skin. I'm reworking all the skins which aren't in the game yet, so let's just pretend they're there. Once the skin is selected, you then get to choose a color. The more I'm thinking about it though, I may move the color to be the first choice. Let me know if you prefer to pick your color or your skin first. Once both of those are chosen, the player can then select the level they would like to vote for, which is now located just below the area the player was looking at. If I seem to be focusing on the fact that the level select is now in the player box, it's because I am. Before COVID, I did a lot of in-person testing with this game. It was taken to meetups, conventions, demo nights, we played it a lot, and players needed to be reminded to pick a level was one of the most common areas where I had to step in while observing. And like before, making the selection on the level will ready up the player. But if we back up before the ready state for just a second, at the bottom there are two optional selections the player can make by pressing a dedicated button. The team button will cycle through the different team options for the player, currently A, B, or none. The second option is for your individual settings. Like in golf, you can set a handicap by adjusting your starting health if you have more experience than your opponents, or to just be a jerk and show off. The friendly trash talking and competition is an element I want to encourage in the game as always. And here the player will also be able to adjust their controls layout as I mentioned earlier. I've put a lot of thought into this user flow, and I think it gives a good amount of control with the least inconvenience. In game design, we usually want to focus on the gameplay mechanics themselves, but the user experience of reaching that gameplay point is just as important. I really want to make sure that when the player enters the game, they're excited about the decisions they've made, and not just annoyed by dealing with the interface to actually make them. I hope you've liked this look into my thought process on why I've made the changes that I have. As always, things may be adjusted if we find something confusing or annoying. I literally realized that I think the color should come before choosing the skin while I was writing the script. That's actually a reason why I really enjoy making these devlogs. They require me to stop and put my thoughts into words and justify my thinking. It makes me deal with the parts that I just assume work in my head. 
even if you don't plan on making videos. Just writing out why you made the decisions you made and how it all works together really, really helps, and I find to be a good exercise. But for now, this is the player select screen that gets the player more options in a less confusing way, which is great for a four-player game where all the players need to know which information on screen is related to them. Thank you all very much for watching. I'd like to give an extra special shout out to my amazing Patreon supporters. Abby Sean, Daniel Martin, David Scott, Hunshrimp, Nightfall, Kevin Halgau, Cormai, Liam Sorta, MLK, Matsi Makes, Nazar Salim, Salty Pretzel, Scott Hansen, Soapy Gnome, and Straight Up Gruntle. You're all awesome people, and I truly can't thank you enough for the support. If you'd like to be a part of the game making process, come say hi at twitch.tv slash vimlark, or you can message me on Twitter or join the Discord with a lot of other really cool people. I hope you're all healthy and safe wherever you are, and I'll talk with you next time. Have a good one. Later.